Hello and welcome back to my channel. In this uh, tutorial, I am going to give you an overview of most of the topics that I'm going to talk about in this lecture. The list of topics is not fully complete yet, but I'll keep adding more and more topics for, for now. These are the topics that I plan to cover in this series of tutorials. As I mentioned before, I'm uh, sticking to Java 8 and I'm using Eclipse IDE for this tutorial and uh, the very first topic that we're going to talk about is the basic math uh, which is the built-in class in Java and then I'm going to talk about the library for evaluating mathematical expressions so you write them as in a string just like the way you write them in MATLAB and then it evaluates the value of that expression for the given values of the parameters of that expression. And the third one um, is plotting, 2D plotting, XY plots, polar plots, this kind of stuff. And for that, we have the very famous J3 chart uh, framework uh, that uh, it's very convenient to use. And I'll show you how to write your own wrapper classes to make it easier to work with J3 chart. And now I'll talk about operator overloading in Java and why we should do it when we're dealing with uh, complex uh, or complicated math structures. For example, if you have two matrix class, if you have two matrices that they are basically instances of a matrix class, then you, you want to sum them with the plus operator. So you have to define how this operator acts as on these classes because by default Java doesn't know. The only thing that the Java compiler knows by default is the uh, applying these uh, primitive math operations on primitive types like double integer. Then I'll talk about the basic uh, concept of complex numbers which engineers almost always need to use when you're solving a differential equation of a linear system. You always need complex numbers. So it's a very, um, very important concept. By default, Java doesn't have any primitive type of complex numbers. It only has real numbers. Therefore, we have to introduce complex numbers as a class, right? And we can build all the functionalities of the complex numbers in the class. And then we go back and define the operator of over overloading for complex numbers. And the next important uh, topic is polynomials. It's a very basic topic and we also look at it and uh, see how we can define polynomials, how we can define operations between polynomials, how we can uh, define uh, uh, methods for finding the roots, real or even complex roots of polynomials. Uh, next, I'll talk about uh, special functions. There are special functions that are not implemented by default. For example, Bessel functions, you usually see them in uh, uh, math uh, differential equations. Be Bessel functions, Gaussian function, error functions, these type of functions. We look at uh, uh, where we can find those, in what libraries. And then I'll talk about basic sequences and series. So sequences are basically a, uh, some functions that the input or the variable of the function is an integer, an index, 1, 2, 3, 0, or, uh, or even negative 1, negative 2. And series are basically sums of sequences. I'll talk about interpolation next, linear interpolation, uh, spline interpolation, in particular cubic spline interpolation. And then I'll talk about Richardson extrapolation. Usually when we want to find the derivative of a function, we use Richardson extrapolation. It's some, it's some sort of accelerated convergence method for a sequence, which is very useful. And then I'll talk about the general ways of solving equations, linear, nonlinear, or systems of equations, systems of linear equations in particular. And we have different ways of solving equations, uh, bisection method, Brent method, newton raphson method. I'll show you where to find libraries or classes that implement all these. And then I'll talk about an interesting topic, which is signal flow graph. 
usually in control systems uh, you have a flow of signal from one point of the system to another and you can model with a directional graph and then you're interested in uh, finding the transfer function from one node to another so signal flow graph of interesting then I'll talk about libraries for care feeding and the general uh, method that I personally use is least square least squares method so it's just uh, minimizing the error the square of the errors for care feeding it could be linear nonlinear different types of care feeding based on least squares and then I'll talk about numerical integration and show you how to implement that uh, show you good libraries for doing numerical integration obviously the very basic numerical integration is just a, a rectangular uh, implementation and then we have trapezoid method we have simpson method we have uh, quadrature methods such as uh, ghost lojan quadrature or different types of quadratures i'll talk about those in details and then i'll talk about linear algebra there are very very uh, strong uh, libraries in java for linear algebra matrices finding the eigenvalues eigenvectors of uh, matrices uh, solving linear systems and then I'll talk about ODEs linear nonlinear I'll show you diff uh, uh, several good libraries for solving ODEs or systems of ODEs which usually uh, in uh, classical mechanics or Hamiltonian dynamics uh, we use uh, systems of ODEs to represent the state of a system uh, an object or a system of particles and then use the phase space representation so systems of all these are important and then i'll talk a little bit about symbolic math i'll show you uh, i believe two different libraries that i've seen in java with good support for symbolic math and then i'll talk a little bit about numerical methods for solving uh, particular numerical methods for solving differential partial differential equations pdes uh, finite difference time domain uh, finite, in general finite difference methods could be time domain frequency domain it's just based on finite difference and finite element method which i've seen a very nice very elegant java library that has implemented finite element and it's very easy to use and then I'll talk about the convolution calculating convolution of two functions usually we use convolution to find the response of a linear system to a to a particular signal in time domain so I'll talk about that a little bit another approach for calculating the convolution is doing the Fourier transform and then inverse Fourier transform when you're dealing with numerical Fourier transform we talk about FFT fast Fourier transform I'll show you two libraries that I've seen for implementing those and then I'll, I'll a little bit talk about optimization minimizing a function maximizing a function what to do if there are many different parameters in the function and we want we want to find the optimum point uh, in particular I'll talk about PSO particle swarm optimization which is more of a linear programming linear optimization typically has a fast convergence if the problem is well uh, well defined now uh, I haven't added the uh, other cases so as we progress in this course in this series of lectures I'll add more and more topics and we'll go through all of them so thank you again for uh, uh, watching this video and I hope to see you guys in the next video please share uh, subscribe and uh, thank you